We've been waiting to review this movie for probably over a year now. A year and a half? Yeah. And it's finally come. And in retrospect... We shouldn't have waited that long. <laughs> we shouldn't have watched it. I mean, Fast 9, fine, was not fine at all. Because the Fast Saga has always been ridiculous, bombastic, but fun. Yeah. But this one was just ridiculous and stupid. Yeah. And I'm going to say this at the beginning, and you can tell me whether you agree or not. This is the worst Fast and Furious movie. Absolutely. Okay, good. I wasn't sure how to play that or where you stood with that one, but yeah, it's the worst. Is that fair? It's more than fair. <laughs> In fact, that might be generous. How can it be generous? It's the worst! It is. It can't worst, be generous. Yeah. I almost don't want to think of it as canon. Ah, oh, right. It's that bad. It was. Wow. We were watching this, and it was just sighs and cringy look away. What was the word you kept on using? Ew. Hey, no red draw the comic end. Nonsense. Yes, and right now we're going to be ripping apart Fast and Furious Nine. We haven't done a full review in months and months and months, so it's going to be a bit odd getting into this, getting into the nitty gritty, and destroying something that deserves to be destroyed. Because we are people who love this franchise. Love it. it is so out of the world. You just sit down, watch it and go, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? But I want it. It's one of those ones that you can watch it and just admit to yourself, yeah, nothing <laughs> at all like this would ever happen yeah. in the realm of reality. I'm more likely to believe Iron Man yeah. than what's going on in this oh, movie. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially in the later ones, because mm -hmm. it's just been one on top of the other. At first it was just cars, yeah. cars and submarines. <laughs> Cars in space, which we aye, guessed. Aye. We, we did guessed. guess it. We guessed it. It's, we did. It's a problem. This was outright bad. The this thing was... is, the first Fast and Furious was solid. It wasn't a great movie, but it was good. The second one, also fun, but ridiculous. It wasn't the levels of Fast 9, but it's not up there with the best of them. Tokyo Drift, guilty pleasure. For Love me, it. guilty pleasure. Some people don't like it, and I understand why, but I just have a innate respect for that movie and how bad it truly is. Honestly, that was a film that was on so much it when was. we were kids. It's because the rights were probably so cheap. Honestly, <laughs> but we watched it so much that the soundtrack, the acting, the story, it just sits in like a nice little part of my heart, mm -hmm. open the door, that's where it sits. It's right there. Yeah. And I'll accept that. It's not the best, but we love it. And then there's Fast 4, Fast and Furious, which wasn't very good, but it kind of rebuilt the world and said, oh, we're going in this direction with the franchise. A bit less on the cars and mm. a bit more on the espionage, a bit more on the drugs, a bit more on different things, right? Yeah. Then you got to five and it was, whoa, boys. The Rock came in, yeah. he did the job, franchise Viagra. I'm not sure the Viagra is still working because Black Adam apparently oh. bombed so much, but at the time, that was a big thing. It made a lot of money, the most that any Fast and Furious movie had made so far. Then six came out, made even more, I believe. And six was good, just not as good as five. Yeah. And then there was seven. And seven was always going to be tough because of Paul Walker passing away. But they did a good job with it. Considering yeah. that giant red flag of how are they going to fix this? I mean, I would say Fast 7 did a better job at honouring and putting forward a posthumous actor than... Wakanda forever. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would agree so. with you, honestly. Mm -hmm. They did it with such grace and humility, mm -hmm. and they really showed the beauty of Paul Walker's life mm -hmm. and Brian in the story. And you have to remember, family's a big thing in this story, yeah. and it felt right. Yeah. And I think the songs went absolutely viral. <sighs> For Huge good reason. hits, yeah. the soundtrack, and the film itself made a lot of money. And it should have been the end point. Considering how it ended, it was wow. You cannot make something and structure something better than the way they ended that movie. Yeah. And that would have been the way to go out. But it made $1.5 billion. So you know what they're going to do? Make what? They're going to make number eight. Yeah. <laughs> which did make like 1.2, 1.3 billy. Hmm. So they said, hey, we need to make even more. So then they made Hobbs and Shaw. Made like $750, $800 million. Spin-off movie, not the same level as the other ones, but it was cheaper and a smaller cost and it made a good amount of money. But with this, you get to that situation with Fast 9 where the reveals were all shown in the trailers. Yeah. The Han reveal didn't need to be there. He was on the posters. Why was no. he on the posters? You could have just had him in a ski mask and him like protecting some of the other members in the trailers without them knowing who it was. Yeah. Because when it came to it in the movie and Han was talked about and referenced, it was, oh, is he alive? And then we realized, yes, 
Of course he's alive! We know he's alive! We've seen it! Right? But if they'd not shown us that, then by mentioning him, we just would have thought, ah, oh, he's dead. And when he was revealed, we got the face shot. Yeah. It was, it was big. Yeah. And I got chills. Yeah. We got the chills. Even though we knew it was coming. And then I thought to myself, if they just hadn't given it away in the trailer, <sighs> it would have been such a big moment. That portion was well done. Yeah. You threw that little gem a way to get people to be like, oh, I need to see the film, Han's back. Yeah. You threw it away to be like, oh, we need bums in seats, bums <sighs> in seats, but you shouldn't have bad done idea. it. It was a bad idea. It just completely deflated the feeling while watching it because we knew it was going to happen. Everyone knew it was going to happen. Then there's the plot. The plot. And the plot was basically number eight again or yeah. number seven again to a degree. Yeah. Why? Why? And honestly, I don't like Charlize Theron in these movies. I don't like it. She's a good actress. But I don't like her in this. Yeah. She just feels like, what did you say, Friar Tuck? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what she's doing here. Yeah, it was not on. The plot just, it's riddled. It's Swiss cheese. And it's the amazing thing was, somehow, the brother storyline with John Cena wasn't the worst part of the movie. It wasn't. It was probably the best part of the movie. Honestly, guys. <laughs> the plot, disgusting. Dialogue, diabolical. Yeah. It was so bad. I thought to myself, who is writing this? Vin Diesel personally was writing those lines. I couldn't even log into the film properly. Mm -mm. After all this weight, after all this hype, really wanting to enjoy it, because we love this franchise, it's a strong no. And the thing that made it even worse was, in the action scenes, there were no stakes. Yeah. Nothing was happening negatively to the characters. Like, in the previous movies, you kind of feel, oh shit, are they actually going to die here? In this one, there wasn't even a second where I thought, they might die. And they self-reference it within the movie to try and make it seem like, oh, it's okay, we know, yeah. we know. But no, that's just bad, poor, shitty writing. Really, really bad. Right? There was one moment where I thought, oh, we might lose this character. Oh wait, he is the protagonist. <laughs> we can't lose him. If you just made it anyone else, we might have been, oh, yeah. oh this might be the moment. Mm -hmm. No, but it's Vin. Vin's not going Vin anywhere in Vin's franchise, Vin is dying. he? No, 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 no. And the flashbacks were insane. There were just too many of them. And it disjointed the movie yeah. so much that it made the pacing feel like this two and a bit hour movie was three and a half hours long. It felt long. There was like a interesting start, fine. There yeah. was a really long saggy middle. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of picked up at the end. Sort but, of? But the payoff wasn't really there. No. Oh. And what made it even worse at the end was that you had the family dinner and there was the seat spare. And then Brian's car comes driving in, and I'm like, no! Boys! Don't do this! What You're are you destroying doing? what you did in Seven! Nah. You're destroying the world you created! There's that line that crucible and pressure creates the strongest diamonds, right? You had that in Seven. You did. You had it! And you just turned it into cubic zirconium. No one wants that! No one wants no that! No one wants that! No. I mean, if you have it, then fine, I'm not adding you, but. If you can get diamonds and you can afford them, then get them. I mean, actually, no, don't waste the money. I'll be fair. The metaphor still stands. The point I'm making makes sense still. But I don't like the fact that they go back and use Brian as an out yeah. when they need it. It just feels icky. Yeah. It feels icky in the writing because you're bringing Mia back as a main character. And this was probably the most Mia in a movie since maybe Fast Five. Yeah. And Brian's not there because uh, yeah. Brian's taking care of the kids because it's like, wait, what are the kids doing? Which yeah. is a valid point. Valid. But it just feels... Bleh! It's really not nice. Repeatedly, Brian was referenced. Yeah. With the, oh, he's taking care of the kids. He's got little Brian. It just feels like the more you tap into that Brian... The weaker and weaker that gets. You're actually sullying it. You're ruining it. And I want to love it. I want to love this film so bad, but it was so bad. I don't want to watch 10. And apparently 10's actually 10 and 11. I thought it was 7 and then we were getting a trilogy of 8, 9, 10. But no, we're getting 8, 9, 10, 11. Because 10 is a two-parter because they want the money. So it's still a trilogy. No, that's horrible. That's horrid. The story does not constitute a two-part finale. Hey, don't even pretend. We, we don't know. We don't know the story. This story barely <laughs> constituted a film. Maybe it does. Maybe they're going to bring back every single character. Gal Gadot's alive. Yeah. Gal Gadot is alive. I'm not having it. They referenced her in this movie for a reason. I understand why. She's bloody Wonder Woman now. Yep. It's stupid to not bring her back. But for the world building, you're removing more and more stakes every single time because everyone who's dead is now alive. Despicable. 
This is Loki on steroids. This was terrible, guys. The only good thing about this film was Dame Helen Mirren. No, Han came back. That was good. I liked it. Fine, I liked right. it because Han is just this charismatic ball yeah. on screen. He, he was. gives you that. He was. And Ludacris again. Oh. Delivering the best lines in oh, the movie. Because delivery. he's the best actor in this franchise. Honestly, other than Han. It's wild. I was believing him and yeah. everyone else. I'm like, you're actually actors. Yeah. He segued into acting and he's doing better than all of you. Ramsey, every time she speaks, it's not that she's bad. It's just jarring. It's the British accent voice. It is. It's just too much. It's too different. And it just takes you out of the scene completely. Yeah. So if you couldn't tell... We didn't love Fast and Furious 9. The CGI was mixed. It wasn't good. It wasn't great. It was sometimes bad. Ah, I mean, I'm thinking about some of this stuff. Wow. I want to stop thinking about wow, it, actually. Wow, wow. I don't want to keep thinking about it. You threw away Francis Ngannou as well. Big time MMA heavyweight champion. What are you doing? What are you trying to do with that? He's a big guy. He's a big he guy. He could have been a player in the future and you just blew him up. Literally, there's no chance of him coming he, back. No, he's dead. No, he, he's dead. He's gone. He's <laughs> no, gone, no. boys. If there's one thing, that man is gone in this franchise. Yeah. This as well. I have to say this. Vin Diesel's character, as far as I remember him being, was the guy who didn't want to kill because he's not a bad person. Yeah. He's not a bad person, but he will protect his family at all costs. In this one, oh. when he was protecting Letty at one point, this is this seems like a very big character shift here. This feels like I'm watching a vigilante go out and murder people. No, here. he was dropping bodies, literally. He was hanging people, breaking, breaking backs. Breaking backs. And I was just confused, absolutely perplexed. Wild. If The Rock did that, I would believe it in the universe. Yeah. But I don't believe Vin Diesel doing that. No. I don't. Even though it's his world, I don't believe it. It didn't feel right. Mm -mm. It's not on. It's not on. Everything about this is just very much not on. Plus, how many times should he have died in this movie? So many times. It's like you can believe it to a certain extent, but then you go, wait, hang on a second, boys. Some of these people should have died. They should have died. But then, again, they survived a nuclear bunker. They survived a nuclear submarine. And this time, they did indeed go to space. Where to next? Where do you think? The moon. They've left it. I'm telling you, they left it for a reason. To the moon. Anyway, guys. If you did enjoy this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel down there if you didn't, if you didn't. Vin Diesel, gonna come after you. Now, after what we saw, you don't want that. Do they want that? No. You really don't, so just subscribe anyway to avoid that. I've been the original the comment. I've been on She's been on Sensei. You have been great. We'll see you next time. That's tomorrow. If you don't know, make a video every single day. Been doing it every day for over 1,500 days now, and we ain't stopping till we get to 10,000 subscribers. So do subscribe. Pop back again tomorrow for some more quality. Shitty content, so hashtag never not here. Hashtag goes also bring the bequest. Bequest means not so simple and jumpy. We also bring that, bring a lot, bring a little, do a lot, do a little, but we do indeed bring the quality, the quality shitty content on a daily basis. So see you tomorrow. More the same, slightly different, but essentially the very same. Once more, see you then. Skadoosh. <laughs>